actually did have a lot of experience on Balloon Fight. My first experience with it being actually with the e-reader on Game Boy Advance, because it was like a cool thing back then. I was like, whoa, the e-reader, look at these cards. I'm like, whoa, Balloon Fight. It's so, it's so, these graphics are so weird, because I was like 10 years older or less at that point. So I just played the crud out of Balloon Fight. And then eventually, um, I went to a, a Comic-Con in New York, and there was a Balloon Fight tournament, and I ended up winning that too. I was just like, wow, do I just know how to play Balloon Fight? This is fun. Or nobody else cares about Balloon Fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the real reason, please don't tell anybody. <laughs> and I was watching Balloon Fight, and I mentioned this a couple of times in some interviews, times in some interviews. Uh, we all know Cosmo is the one who advanced, now Narcissa, as you may know. And right before Cosmo got the score, Ego Raptor was in the lead by a lot. And I was just like, oh my god, Ego Raptor's going to advance. Because I love Ego Raptor. I'm sure a lot of people in the crowd love Ego Raptor, right? I think we've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it here yet. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. I mentioned his name. And I said, whoa, it's the Ego Raptor. We'll, we'll, we'll show you later. No, I said it's for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> come up, come over here. Thor switch what do you want to do? <laughs> Mr. 110. Soaking wet. <laughs> I was really excited to see that Eco Raptor was in the lead, but then Cosmo took it. I like Co I like Cosmo slash Narcissa too because they're a I like watching their speedruns too, her speedruns now. And you know, I was excited to see her make it past as well. But you know, I'm just saying Eco Raptor, man. <laughs> It would have been just like meme quality if he made it. <laughs> and then, I just want to mention, afterwards, I actually pulled out my 3DS because I had Balloon Fight on it as a part of the ambassador program. I was just like, what would have happened if I did it and I beat everyone's score on the first try? Wow, wow. <laughs> not to brag or anything. That's it. Not to brag. He mentioned it, not to brag. Not at all. No, I'm totally <laughs> bragging. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> all right, so the next round in... The next round in winners was Super Smash Brothers, and everyone who was still there kind of just like looked at me in dread, because they already <laughs> knew about me. And as a lot of you may already know, I'm a pretty high-ranking Super Smash Brothers player in New York City, as a Wii Fit trainer main. <laughs> I was walking out of there like, he's got this. Yeah. Next. <laughs> at, the moment, at the moment, I'm ranked uh, fourth in New York City. I'm very happy for that. And you know, we played, it was free for all instead of competitive style of gaming, but I have experience with casual style play as well. Picked Shulk, really felt it, <laughs> really feeling it, and I just did really well. It was the highest score over the course of two cumulative time to free for all, six minutes with items. And at the end, I believe I had plus four, uh, Cosmo had plus one, and the other two had like minus two, one and minus three, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then finally, and so that was me and Cosmo, the top two players to advance to the final game. And finally, a lot of people, including Patrick, like suspected this. I didn't for some reason. The final game was Super Mario Maker. I didn't suspect it, actually. You didn't? No. A lot of people were suspecting it because Nintendo still hadn't given us a lot of details on it. And at that point, I didn't realize it in my head, but at that point, there were no Mario games up to that point. No Mario platformers. Yeah. We were just like, wow. I, I never actually thought about it. I just, I just wanted to play video games. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people, but not myself, noticed that there weren't any Mario platforms. So they were just like, yeah. we're, "It's probably going to be Super Mario Maker," and so there it was. And I'm not like an expert, but I do have a lot of experience in Mario platformers. So we had our first three rounds. If you remember the rules, it was each win in the first three rounds granted you 15 seconds advantage in the final round. And I won the first one, Cosmo won the second one, and should I be saying Cosmo or Narcissa? Honestly, I don't mind either way. No, I mean personally, but she, she was I Cosmo at the time. Yeah. I'll say Narcissa. <laughs> so I won the first one, Narcissa won the second one, and then I won the third one. So I had 15 seconds advantage. And so the final well, the first three runs were crazy. There were just all these ridiculous traps, like the uh, triple Bowser stacks. Oh, the whole crowd went crazy on that. I love it. It's hilarious. And this was kind of silly. On the when we started, we were like, I had the advantage because I won the coin flip, 
I was just like, do you want to go first or second? And I was just like, oh, if I go first, I can watch the level. So I was like, I'll go second. And I'm like, okay, put this blindfold on. Like, it didn't work. <laughs> just sitting there thinking, this didn't work. <laughs> I did get to listen to some smooth jazz, though, while I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I, I was able to win the first one just barely, because apparently uh, Narcissa almost made it to the end. The second one, I completely blew it up, because Narcissa made it perfectly, honestly. And the last one, I made it. Uh, mostly in part due to some specific Super Mario World tricks that Narcissa didn't know about. So we went to the final round with me at 15 seconds advantage, and... I'm sure a lot of you saw how it went over. Narcissa was struggling on a lot of um, a lot of segments there. And I asked, like the thing was, at, this is gonna be later on, I saw Narcissa at the airport and we talked to her a little bit and she explained that she didn't realize what the buttons were mapped to in New Super Mario Brothers. She was holding down a jump button while pushing jump. And what happens is if you do that, Mario doesn't do like a full jump, he will always just do a short jump. And it's just like, she couldn't get up there for some reason. And she also just wasn't familiar with wall jumping, unfortunately. She's not very familiar with the new Super Mario Brothers mechanics. I am though, and I was able to coast through it relatively smoothly, but you saw me getting stuck on a few things. I thought I was doing very well with adaptation, being safe, stuff like that. I hope I was able to put on a good show, but, and I think I did. I didn't even think that Bowser at the end was the end of it, but then people were saying, John won, and I was like, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and what are your impressions from watching that? Um, I was kind of I was kind of bummed that Narcissa did not know about the wall, did not have the wall jumps down, because... I know, we didn't have a climactic finish, finish or anything. It was just... But I, I enjoyed the whole spectacle of it all, the whole... They had a block and eight ghosts pop out. It's like, I know, oh. just the crazy levels. It was a good way of showing what Super Mario Maker was capable of. Great game. Oh, unfortunately, it was on the video. Hop in the stiletto heel and then into the Bowser Copter. I really hope there's a Switch version of Super Mario Maker. Yeah. I just want to play that game more and more with online capabilities and downloading, unlike the uh, 3DS version. So, uh, what happened after you won? <laughs> Sorry, I got a after I won, they announced, hey, here comes Shigeru Miyamoto. I was like, oh my gosh. He came out, and my plus one jumped onto the stage, too, thankfully. And, you know, he came out, Miyamoto said some really nice words, and, well, in the hub of everything, I was talking to Miyamoto, and he said, thank you very much. And on behalf of Nintendo, I want to thank you very much for all the great classic games you put out throughout my entire life. And he was like, thank you. I'm not 100% sure he understood what I said, but I think he understood the meaning. Yeah. And, you know, I gave him a handshake. I gave Reggie a handshake, too, but I was able to talk to him. He seemed a little busy. Not a big deal, though. Um, and what was I about to say? So I got the trophy, and some people were wondering about this. I got the trophy, and Miyamoto was trying to hand me the 3DS, and I couldn't take it. It wasn't because I didn't want it. And I had like this face, like, oh my god, he's about to hand me a 3DS. There's an important reason for this. That trophy weighed 15 pounds. Whoa. <laughs> and I was holding it out like this. I couldn't hold that with one hand. So I had to hold it like this, basically, if you all noticed. And you could like see me with these like noodle muscles. This isn't even a muscle. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, he wants to hand me a 3DS. The only thing I could have done is take it and I would have had to hold it upside with the trophy and that might have broken it. Put so it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and if you saw the video, I like took it and I was just like, I can't hold this. I'm gonna put it in my pocket. I can't put it in my pocket either. That would be rude. I was just like, I don't know what to do with this. So I had to hold the trophy like close to my body and find someone to hold it. Luckily my plus one was on the stage. I was like, please hold this. I'm sorry. So I held it up and I gave out a few signatures at the moment, at the time, and one person, because they posted it on Facebook later on, one single person was able to get something signed by all, every single person on that stage. I was just like, wow, he did it. <laughs> I was just like, he's gonna be able to. That's some collector's item. <laughs> and it was just like really cool being up there. I was just like, wow, I can't believe I won. I did the stupidest looking smile that I've ever seen in my life. 
like there was so much of my gums showing, and I can't even recreate that smile if I tried somehow. It was just weird. Then it was just like photoshopped into a John Cena body. <laughs> <laughs> and you all saw that video, and his name is John Numbers. <laughs> Did uh, they have you do anything after that or since? Um, after that, I took a couple of interviews. Disney did a little segment with me. I'm not sure if it actually made it onto any Disney channels or anything, but I know the interview with everyone went through. The interview with everyone was cool, and then they had me do like a skit with, um, I forgot the name at this point. It's like something in his garage. I just don't remember. Some. <laughs> <laughs> Thor did the entire time so far. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait. My apologies go out to you and your garage. I forgot at this point. I have a really bad memory, and it's been two years. And then after that, yeah, basically after that, I went back to the hotel, got my flight back home, and I was just like, wow, we're well, in chat now. Cool. Welcome to the club. <laughs> and now here I am. And what did you do after it was all over? What did you do after Red Scepter was all over anyway? Well, that guy who put his shirt on stage, that was the first thing I ever signed. And it never occurred to me that I would sign anything in my life besides forms. <laughs> so my head kind of exploded at that point. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I immediately started bragging to some of my friends about it after I left the, when I finally left the building. <coughs> but pretty much at that point, I was actually working the next day, so it's back, it's back to my usual nine to five life, you know? But I started, I started getting out a little more and going to a gaming con. The first one I went to was a Retropalooza in Dallas that year, primarily because... Right, you've been really active in the gaming community, I know that, <laughs> you've been going everywhere. Primarily I went there because they were having an NES Remix Championship on tournament. And I'm like, I gotta go. And I'm like, wait a minute. My cousin lives in Dallas. I should do this every year. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, I, I started going to going to other places. I, I I only went to Dallas that year, but the next year I went to a few different places. And it's been really fun. I'm glad I'm, I'm loving it. Finally, getting some use out of my vacation hours. <laughs> As for me, as far as after I got back home, I did attempt streaming for a little while. I borrowed some of my friends' like technology. I was just like, all right, I'll try streaming. But at that point, I had recently gotten fired at an 8 to 5 job. And I was just like, I got burnt out within a month. I was just like, I never want to do this again. Um, I'm actually like trying to make plans living with someone who owns a lot of streaming equipment. If I get that to go through, I actually will be streaming again with um, House of 3000, go follow them on Twitch and Twitter, and follow me on Twitter too, drop numbers. <laughs> but yeah, I am trying to get back into streaming. I think my burnout and like following trauma has has like gone away at this point. And I do want I do want to entertain you guys. I'm sure you guys are big fans of me for a reason. I love you, man. You hate me, I see you've been talking to me. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. He talks to everyone like us. <laughs> don't, don't leave him. After I had given up on streaming, that was basically, it was like back to normal. I did a couple of interviews, and, you know, in that Game Informer, Game Informer spectacle, if any of you saw that, it was really bad. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, my God. They took so much of what I said out of context. Eventually, they did put up, put up the whole transcript, and that thankfully cleared everything up. I didn't realize how strong social media was though, because I was just like on Twitter. I was just like, guys, I'm really sorry about this, but it's really not what happened. And it was just like, within like a day, all of Twitter was blowing up over this. It's like, wow, this actually happened. I had, I actually like apologized a little bit over an email. I was like, I'm sorry this like blew up as much as it did. I'm a really apologetic person. I think I've apologized like 10 times already over this microphone. <laughs> So Thor, what do you have that can relate to some of this? Yes, Thor. What do you have to say? Oh God. Uh, well, uh, I was at the 2015 uh, championships for a few minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I was in the front row there. Uh, you may have seen a Oh, hole. I think I did a qualifier. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I didn't get a 
I actually didn't see you in the crowd, unfortunately. Yeah. I didn't know what you looked like. I think I oh. left before, uh, before you started. I knew what he looked like 25 years ago, okay? <laughs> I, uh, Nintendo had me out, and then I, um, I waited for the thing to start, and then I went outside, and I talked to, like, a homeless guy for a while. It's <laughs> a good way to spend it. Oh. Yeah. It was just bad timing for me, I guess. Um, yeah, 90 was a, a pretty wild experience. Uh, Chris was there. Mike was there. 30 cities over nine months, and we were all uh, pretty young, I guess. I was like 12 or 13, so it was uh, kind of intimidating, I guess. But it was a lot of fun. We got to see a lot of games before they came out, and there was a lot of really wild personalities involved. What do you remember? <laughs> I remember Thor pretty vividly in uh, 90 when I got to the finals. I actually knew about it before the finals. I had known some people that worked in Nintendo during 90, and I would be in contact with them, and they would be telling me what's going on with the tournament, especially after I had won in Jersey. And they were like, there's this guy, Thor, who is just wrecking everything. And I'm like, what? What is he doing? And they're like, I. I the story was that your dad was like recording all your games and that's how you memorized your pattern and I was like, Thor, Thor was just putting up like, you know, very consistently, he's like four and a half million, four and a half million, four and a half million, four and a half million. It's like, job, okay, Thor. you're, you're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're not in my age group. <laughs> that was a lot, I had a lot of fun in 90 though. And, uh, the, um, I went to New York first. Uh, tried it out, then I went to Jersey and barely won Jersey, but you know, then we go to the finals. I think I'm 19 that year, and I was really arrogant. I was total, I was total ass to everyone. And uh, I, had no, <laughs> I, I was worse then. Uh, Is that I'm, even possible? I'm nice now. I'm actually nice now. He's nice. Okay. I just, I just like to rip people. So. If you don't know about how the 90 championship works, shall I explain it? Uh, well, I'll give you a minute. We're running short on time here a little bit, so I'm trying All to right. just... I was just going to say, it's just Mario... It, it was structured the same way. Mario won Rad Racer Tetris, with the massive multiplayer being on Tetris. So it was just like our things. It was just the Tetris World Championships. Right. <laughs> and, but the, the, the weird thing about that card was, depending on what you did in Mario, it would depend on the pattern that you got in Tetris. So you could yeah. literally, if you did the same thing in Mario every time, you would get the same pattern in Tetris. I actually didn't know that. Oh, yeah. It's based on your score. He did during the tournament. <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I, he yeah. did. Thor, Thor's lying. He doesn't remember. He totally knew. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, this is a good story. Uh, Robin Gohara pointed this out to me. He's got the, the tapes of the final three games on the final day. Because on that final day, uh, we played 30, uh, then 7, and then 2. I got the same Tetris pieces all three times. Played them three completely different ways. <laughs> Not very well. <laughs> I was really lucky to win. And, uh, but the, like the third time in a row that I got the same pieces, I was like, this is weird. And I, I wish I would have known because then I could have tried for 5 million. <laughs> And yeah, I, I made it to the, uh, like, I was number one in major group during top 30, got on stage, top seven, and then choked in Mario and totally blew my whole thing. And I was, uh, I was pretty crushed that year. I mean, as much as I won 94, I, I won the 90s a little more. As much as he won 94? He yeah. won 94 too much? He did. <laughs> yeah, for me, I pretty much, uh, I'm pretty convinced I came in eighth because there was a huge pile of scores in the high two millions. And I, I pretty much thought I was going to make top seven, but I think I just barely got edged out. Um, and uh, I wasn't in the, the final finals, but uh, I was already really happy because in my city final, after I won Los Angeles, uh, I met these guys that, uh, that worked at Atari, and uh, they hired me. And before the finals, I was already working there, making games and stuff. So I was just like, okay, I got a job out of this. And uh, I built that into a career, worked at Capcom, Atari, worked on some games, Primal Rage, Street Fighter 3. Street Fighter Alpha 3, so that was kind of like my real prize on uh, the Nintendo Championships, and uh, that was before the Sega one in 94. Sega, Sega Championships in 94 was sort of like my, my big one, and uh, that had a $25,000 prize with everything that Sega made uh, for two years. Uh, you can check that out on YouTube, uh, the, the whole thing was broadcast on MTV, 
so Sega had a big one, Nintendo had a big one, the 90 and the 94 were, were huge years for 16-bit gaming, and they don't do them like that anymore. One of the disappointing things with me about the 2015 tournament, and it'll probably be 2017 also, is just what they gave John for winning, which was uh, yeah, let's get to that. dismal. Let's hear it. Uh, <laughs> okay, it wasn't dismal. <laughs> No. So as you know, the prize for winning the qualifier is 250 bucks of a Visa card and, you know, the free trip and stuff like that. And free dinner and stuff. And the prize for winning the Nintendo World Championships was the 15 pound trophy and a signed 3DS. Why don't you tell us about the 1990 prize, Thor? It's not, it's not Rocky Rockway. Rock, Chris Tanks, uh, that was pretty, pretty badass. Awesome. You guys, uh... Look that up, it was like a live TV tournament where they Yeah, they, they were they were like playing it up like a huge game show, honestly. I think that was just like how it was supposed to be at the time, nineteen nineties. It really looked like a game show when they were doing it. Yeah, I think the T V deal like I don't know that didn't didn't follow through. But it was at the Star Trek theater at Universal Studios, so at least they were gonna, it was cool, but yeah, it was ten grand a TV, like a forty inch TV that I sold for a stereo. Because I wanted, I wanted music. This is like a prize. TV. This is the prize pool you get out of like playing the Price Is Right. <laughs> <laughs> and a car. It was like, he got a car. <laughs> it, was, it was it was a Geo Metro MSI. This was like a car that you couldn't even fit in these days. <laughs> now I don't mind, but I like didn't get an amazing prize like that. I had fun the whole time, and the three, the sign 3DS and the trophy are really nice. I'm just saying I'm sad, that's all. Yeah. Not disappointed. I'm but you not, know. Uh, I mean, I'm just disappointed in Nintendo more than anything else, because, look, it's not like they're... I know, but I don't want to sound entitled or anything. I don't, it's I'm fine with what I got. It's not about being entitled, they should do more. Yeah. They can, it's not like they can't afford it, you know? You want the whole thing. I mean, <laughs> obviously the recognition is the best thing about winning. Okay. Yeah. Then your, the experiences that you had, but they should reward their winners better. I mean, look. I am not a very confrontational. The international just winners. happened <laughs> for Dota two, and they're giving away like twenty three million. You know, they send them yeah. just words a little bit. So in nineteen ninety, like what they gave us in nineteen ninety for city championships. Does anyone know what this is? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. They gave each of the 90 uh, winners of the 1990 city champions one of these. And uh, like at the time, Thor got a $10,000 savings bond and, and like a Geo Metro. But this sucker here is worth easily five figures no matter way, which way you slice it. So oh. anyone, any of us who kept, oh. it's an original 1990. This is the one that I right. want for yeah, my city. Something. And uh, these are worth, you know, they're, they're keep going up in value too. So. Uh, uh, each of the city champions got that. That wasn't even the whole thing. It ended up being worth more than than the whole prize for any of them. So uh, you never know what what they give you. It might be worth something someday. Deep. So please, I don't want to bad bath Nintendo. Nintendo's cool. Trust me. <laughs> I I can bad. They made they made the Switch. This thing is beautiful. They're in yeah, 1994. I mean, they made I know, <laughs> they made the Wii U, but they made the Switch. <laughs> they made the Virtual Boy too. <laughs> he has a really good point. <laughs> All hail the virtual boy. So, are there any questions? Yeah, there can be questions. Well, I had a comment about the 2015-2017 uh, championships. I, the thing that was most disappointing to me is the number of cities that they have. Eight. They, yeah, it's eight. World championship, ladies World and championships, and right? Like, U.S. only. You have to have a U.S. I think Canadians can participate in this. Oh, Canadian? <laughs> Some of Canada can participate. Okay. <laughs> but, like, oh. it, it just doesn't seem widespread enough. Like, the, you know, the 30 cities sounds good, right? And yeah. If they, they want to make it international, that would be even better. I understand if it's U.S. only. I think they're just using the world championship. It's just like a... Like, as an adjective, not like it's for the whole world, it's well, just like the world champion. Well, sure, but I mean, it, it feels like it should be bigger. This is NWC. I know. It should be bigger. It should yeah. be a few more people. Every time they make it smaller, they're just kind of like degrading the name of it. So, well, technically speaking, they... it's bigger this time than last, than two years ago, because they actually made age groups this time around. There's still eight, there's still right, eight locations, but they're taking two people this time, 12, uh, 13 and up and 12 and under. Yeah, there'll be more Two people from every location. And there'll be eight invitees again, too. So 24 people this time around. I am glad to hear that they're taking kids this time, because last time I think there was an age limit, wasn't there? Yeah, you had to be 13 before. Yeah. 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 
Well, it's also so they have a fighting chance. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in 1990, let me tell you something. Jeff Hansen would have wrecked everyone. Yeah. That kid was awesome. Yeah. I know. You sometimes get a kid like that just out of nowhere destroying everyone. It's it's actually amazing when you see it. You're just like wow. Yeah, yeah it's as good as Thor. Yeah, 1990, uh, the, so the team division was the strongest, followed by the little kids, and the old man division was like easy pickings. So what? Dude, we all called it that. Anyway, hopefully, if they do do another one, we'll see more locations for sure. Maybe 16? That'd be nice. I think I they need something that's a multiple of eight at the very least. So I was 19 in that division, I'm just going to say. Team. 1990? Last team? Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Are you guys involved in the 2017 one at all? Do you have flying about for the appearances? We have not been contacted yet to be an invitee or anything, but I do have to mention that for the 2015 one, invitees were invited long after the qualifiers were over. They we might. We can actually find out. Oh yeah, oh, when, did you get when did you get your invite to 2015? I should have considered that question. Okay, he's going to check his email. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume, like let's just assume, I'm going to use Ego Raptor as the example. Let's assume Ego Raptor went to one of the qualifiers and then won it. There would have been no need to invite him. So they might, like j this just might be a hypothetical. They might be waiting to see if I win the qualifier first or not. And then it's like, oh, he didn't make it. Let's invite him. But it could be that they've already decided we're waiting until after the qualifiers, and I just might be screwed anyway. Who knows? Yeah, I was going to ask if they were going to disqualify you guys from playing again since you already won. I don't. Yeah, think you get really good. I don't think they're going <laughs> to disqualify us for that. Or that I'm going to throw myself into the lava on Bowser's Castle 1 first. Yeah, you're going to be pretty good about that. I mean, sometimes he's, good he's got a really good chance of winning. I've, I've seen him play 7, and yeah. he's. Got an amazing time. Right now my time is uh, 1 minute 18 seconds, 0.2, which is pretty good. The it's, fastest record it's pretty is... pretty good. The fastest record right now is 1 minute 15, but that involves like really risky wall jumps that people should not be doing. And hopefully will not do. <laughs> all, it takes is one anyway. all it takes is one person to get it for me to lose, so, you know. We'll see what happens. Wish me luck. Fingers crossed. Wish him luck, too. Patrick needs to win. I'm probably going to need it more than he Patrick does. needs to win a world championship. I'm yeah, we've been practicing our room. We've just been like, you might think that we're like these crazy transcendent people. We're just like, we play video games like with our minds. But no, we're actually just a bunch of angsty. Speak for yourself. Angsty. <laughs> yeah. What's the word? Man children. We're just <laughs> cursing, cursing out our systems. Speak for yourself. Every, every one minute. That's exactly what it is. I am the transcendent. I've seen you play. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> May 22nd, I don't know when the final board that, Yeah, that's not The qualifiers were on May 30th, so. Okay, so um, it was oh, just so it was about a week over. I thought, it was, what I thought it was. So, so you if he gets before. that invitation, it will probably be pretty close but wait, to you. But wait, if you got an invita invitation to be in the crowd, not as an invitee, it might be a little different on circumstances. Right. There be. might be different circumstances. I don't know. We'd have to ask someone who was invi yeah. invited. I don't have any of those. I know, neither do I. I should probably try to contact one if I can manage it. Thanks for the, thanks for the idea, though. Any, uh, any other questions? Any other questions? I think we're about to get kicked out. Okay. Any questions? I'm really on time right now. So after this, we're, uh, we're running the finals for our retro tournament here. They're going to be right outside that door. That's right. It's the top eight scores, right? Top eight scores. Yeah, well, I mean, we have the top ten out there. We don't know if all of them are here. Top ten. So, oh. you know, we'll take the eight that are here. And uh, it should be pretty fun. We designed something uh, that we hope everybody enjoys this year. Uh, we've got Chris over here. He's going to do our announcing for it. Yo. Let's go, Chris. <laughs> right. right. Let's go. I'm the, uh, they made a meme out of my announcing lately. If you uh, Google uh, Boom Tetris for Jeff. Yes! <laughs> that's you? Wait, you guys actually? That's you? That's me. I'm the Boom Tetris for You're Jeff. You're? Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so I only found out about this a few days ago. Is it really a thing? Dude, it's so funny! <laughs> <laughs> I know! Boom Tetris for this. Right, I was like, boom.
boom, Tetris for Jeff, boom, Tetris for Jonas. All right, all right, he's got the log bars up, boom, Tetris for Jeff. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I can't, I can't, I can't believe this. <laughs> That's why he's our answer. <laughs> I, I've been doing it since 2010, but I guess it didn't really catch on until I guess there's a viral video going around because you know, people are memeing off of it and stuff. I haven't seen memes about it, I just saw the actual They made video. a t-shirt. They made a <laughs> <laughs> And they're sending me one. I personally haven't seen any memes. I've just seen the original video. I was just like, well, what is this? Tetris versus on NES? Does this actually exist? And then I suddenly start hearing, boom, Tetris for Jeff. <laughs> boom, Tetris for Jeff. <laughs> Who was the other guy? Jonah. Boom, Tetris for Jeff. And everybody thought I was biased for Jeff because I said, boom, Tetris for Jeff. 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 And um, I guess it just Jeff rolls off the tongue. He hates Jonas. Everyone, everyone's but Jonas won for like six years. I've always been yeah. saying, boom, Tetris for Jonas, like constantly over the past seven years, so. I guess uh, they were only tuned in to that one finals match. I was in Boom Tetris for pretty much everybody else in the tournament when it happened, uh, but they they thought I was biased, but not really. But it was exciting seeing a new contender. Jeff had never fought Jonas before, so uh, it was new stuff. And uh, I guess I'll be wearing my Boom Tetris for Jeff shirt. Uh, I, was, I wanted to wear it here, uh, but they didn't uh, send it to me in time. Uh, no, they, they sent it to me two days ago, so I wouldn't have gotten here in time. Hilarious. Uh, I'll wear it here next year, though, I promise. And, uh, you can get it uh, if you go to if you just go to YouTube and put, type in Boom Tetris for Jeff. You'll see the the video with four million views and six thousand comments is the one where it has a link for the shirt if you really want one. <laughs> it also helps support our Tetris World Championships that we do every year. Woo! It's in Portland at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. They're great friends of our show here at this con. So if you uh, feel like going to another great show like Game On Expo here, uh, uh, Portland is uh, it's in similar in spirit. So highly recommend it. So we're gonna close this out. I just want to close this out by saying, look, we're here every year, and we're here because this guy in the back, Jason, Hi, Jason. along with John and Blythe, they run this show every year, and they are awesome. And give them a round of applause. For you. <laughs> yeah, here's the Game Line Expo. We're very appreciative of kind of bringing us out here every year so that we can do this for you guys. So thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you. That's good. Is that it? Do we just walk up without saying anything? <laughs> <laughs>